Hi there. My name's John Blakely, and welcome to Past Forward, where we discuss history and current events, hopefully in a humorous light. Now, there's a big anniversary coming up next year, the 200th anniversary of the War of 1812. This event is hugely significant in the history of both Canada and the United States. And it was funny. Last summer, I was watching an interview with an American tourist on the news about the, the effect of the Canadian dollar, and now it was affecting tourism of Americans coming up north. And he said something very interesting that all Canadians should think about. He said, great town, nice people, great city, but too bad nobody can seem to tell you anything about it. And that says a lot. Canadians don't know their history. And it reminds me of another conversation I had with a co-worker along a similar vein. We were talking, I don't know how it came up, Fort York. He said, well, yeah, but it's never been in a battle. What? And this guy's an educator. He has a university degree, and he didn't know anything about Fort York one of the seminal events in the history of Toronto. Fort York was built, completed around 1797, uh, commissioned by then Lieutenant Governor John Graves Simcoe. Uh, the War of 1812 broke out. The British, under Isaac Brock and his native Indian allies, immediately went on the offensive. They captured Detroit and they gained control of Lake Ontario and Lake Erie. What happened was, the Americans the following summer to wrest control back decided to launch raids across the lake. On April 26, uh, Zebulon Pike uh, and about 1,800 soldiers crossed in a flotilla of 14 gunboats. And they crossed the lake on April 26, and on April 27, they attacked uh, the garrison at Fort York. They were initially opposed by some Native allies who were crucial. There would not be a Canada if it wasn't for Native allies, and that's not politically correct sort of historical revisionism. They were crucial to our side in the entire war. Um, what I'm going to give you is sort of a reconstruction, a reasonable facsimile of how the battle went just to give you an idea. If you want, just wait for me here. I'm going to get my campaign hat on here from the Princess of Wales Royal Regiment and step this way and I'll do a reconstruction of the battle, if you will. Now this is a reasonable, not so hand-drawn facsimile of what happened. Uh, the American invasion force coming in, landing on April 27th. They were initially opposed. Uh, there were no photographs at the time. The, the, no idea, but possibly landing craft did resemble my socks. We don't have proof. The engravings at the time are kind of sketchy. And they remained offshore. They advanced in and were initially opposed by local militia and their native allies, mostly Ojibwe and local militia, about 300 of them who recruited and lived in the local area. These were part-time soldiers. They were driven off, about these 50 troops, after a brief firefight, and they retreated. The Americans advanced. The British, about 300 regulars, uh, they did cross the river. They were very strong in those days. The Americans advanced and confronted the British at the fort, and after a bombardment, uh, the British were maneuvering their forces, British representing here, and an explosion occurred, and about 50 British soldiers, sorry, 20 British soldiers were killed in the explosion that followed. They retreated under General Schaaf and withdrew from the fort. As they were withdrawing, he gave the order to blow up the powder magazine where the ammunition was stored, and a frigate, man of war, they were building named after the late General Isaac Brock. It went something like this. Charge, charge, blimey, bloody hell, must blow magazine, blimey. <laughs> Okay, big explosion, blew up the powder magazine. The American general, Zebulon Pike, whom Pike's Peak was named after, was killed along with about 38 American soldiers. Total Americans killed in the battle was roughly 52, I believe, and the British suffered 82 deaths. Um, the Americans stayed in the town looting and burning. I'm looting and burning. Burned down the legislature, represented here. It was a little bit bigger, not exactly to scale. Burning homes and removing personal artifacts. They stayed until the 8th of May, then went back onto their socks, or as, as it were, boats, doo -doo 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 -doo. loaded up, and went back across the river, sorry, back across Lake Ontario, from whence they came. Now why is this important? Well, it's important because the following summer, in retaliation for the burning of York, as Toronto was then known, the British launched a raid in August 9, 1814 and burned Washington. They chased uh, 
Dolly Madison from the White House and to cover up the burn marks on the White House, sorry, on the government house, it was painted white. I just gave it away there. It was painted white to cover up the burn marks. The War of 1812 was ended by the Treaty of Ghent in February 1815. There was a battle fought shortly afterwards at the New or Battle of New Orleans and skirmishes continued up until the summer of that year. Both sides claim they won. The Americans claim they won because they stood up for themselves and they didn't lose any of the territory that they had lost to the British at that point in time. The British and Canadians won because they felt that the war is being fought now on American soil where they had started initially on the defensive and that Canada had survived as a wasn't an independent nation but the Amer British colonies of Upper and Lower Canada had survived as independent entities and the Americans had failed in their objective of annexing Canada. Among the other issues that caused the war was the impressment of American sailors onto British ships. They would come on, pull guys off the ship, and claim they are British deserters. That actually didn't come up in the peace negotiations. However, the practice was largely ceased after the war. Thank you very much for this first video. I'm hoping my production values go up a little bit. Please uh, make any comments that you wish and like it if you can. I'll be putting out some more videos over the course of the week. Thank you and welcome to Past Forward.